very excited about the uh, the next guest I'm about to train with and, and uh, do a podcast interview with. Coop DC. That's his Instagram uh, handle. And no doubt it's going to be a tough session. It's going to help me towards my fight. It's going to educate me. And most importantly, it's going to give value to the audience on my podcast. Be happy, never content as always. Hey guys, welcome back to the Stephen Sully Study, my podcast. Um, had a fantastic day so far, just done a bit of training. I've got my next guest with me, a gentleman called yeah. Coop DC, uh, Instagram handle. <laughs> um, this has been a long time coming because um, I'm going to give a bit of backstory to the audience. So I came across you or your content mm. on Reggie H's podcast, and I think the title mm. of it was called For Memory, Lentil Lovers. Yeah. <laughs> And I've listened to that <coughs> three or four times. Yeah. And it's one of those podcasts that I could listen to in mm. 10 years time from now, 20 years time from now, mm. and find something new. It's almost like a layered film. You yeah. get so much value from it. <coughs> Thank you. And when I started following you, and we've had a couple of conversations mm. over Instagram and stuff, I just knew that you were kind of the person I wanted to talk to about wellness, fitness, training, all kinds of different things. Mm. I think your knowledge left a lasting impact on me so the way I would introduce you is you're a nutritionist yep. plant-based mm. trainer personal trainer an entrepreneur also a father yeah so let's talk about the podcast how did you get involved with Reggie Yates and being on, on his podcast I got involved in a podcast do you know what <clears throat> it's funny because I just got invited to a dinner and it's a dinner amongst some well-known people within the urban industry within the musical industry within the movie industry and every time they had a dinner together as the core group of them and every time they had a dinner they invited one person one guest to come along who had some type of substance that can bring something to the table and um, I was invited and as we got on to like our third topic it became about health okay and we started speaking about health we started speaking about health amongst the youth health amongst the African and Caribbean communities and health in general and that's when my voice becomes a little bit more louder and of course Reggie Yates came in he actually popped in late so when he popped in he saw that the whole table was quiet and I was talking and it was the first time he had ever seen a Carla who was also there who has an incredible brain and an incredible amount of knowledge that he stores within it um, not talking and Reggie was like no wait hold on <laughs> who's this guy that's talking without a column even uttering a single word and that's what drew his attention straight into whatever it was that I was talking about at that precise moment and anyway we ended up leaving the dinner table all of us agreeing there was nine of us all of us agreeing that we're going to do a two-day or 48 hour water fast and water fast just means that you're volunteer voluntarily staying absent from all food and all beverages apart from water for a substantial amount of time the time that was listed was 48 hours okay and that's what happened and then after we all completed that he called me up i think like a week later and was like look i'm flying to china I'm about to do a podcast and i want you to be on a podcast can you come tonight china. so yeah he was about to fly to china so i oh i thought you meant you to go no to no china. no 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 he yeah, was about to fly yeah, to china okay. he's doing his last podcast and he wanted to squeeze this one in before he flew to china because he was gonna he was gonna be away for a whole month okay so i left that same evening and which is very difficult for me is because how early i start my day to what and how active i am throughout the day since it reaches around four thirty-five. yeah he wanted me to be there for nine o'clock we didn't actually start the podcast till 10. My brain literally shuts down at 9 p.m. Like people that's my friends see my eyes just go. <laughs> I start squinting, I'm ready to go to sleep. So for me, for, for me to hear you say those very kind words about the podcast is, I'm like, 
or thank you very much it's because for me I felt like I was shutting down and blabbering and forgetting things so yeah so that's how I ended up on the podcast I've got to give a shout out to the the, the lady friend my colleague who uh, told me about mm. the, the, the actual episode Katrina Doohan uh, she said you've got to listen to this mm. she knows I'm into like fitness wellness and you know just trying to better myself all the mm. time um, predominantly I'm in I've been involved with sales and I've got a few companies off the back end of that and at the core of every company is sales mm. now the core of sales is energy because <laughs> the transfer of enthusiasm is the definition of sales yeah how do you get enthusiasm you need to be healthy mm -hmm. you can't get enthusi enthusiastic long term if you're not healthy yeah so when you start talking about certain aspects of nutrition predominantly plant-based stuff and the way you kind of are it resonated with me so mm. much and so much so this is a little bit inspired from me, but also Reggie, because I heard Reggie say um, for a year went pescatarian. Yeah. And then he started trying different different things. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to do three months pescatarian. Yeah. Because I've given it a go anyway, and then, veg and then vegetarian and mm. sometimes vegan. And I went for three months. I was like, this is easy. <laughs> and what you said also made sense. People don't miss meat. They miss the texture of meat, but mm. actually the flavors are from plants. Exactly. So barbecue, yeah. tomato, yeah. you know, sweet and sour. It's yeah. all derived from a plant. Exactly. And I just like, that makes so much fucking sense. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I started testing it, and now I'm nearly in November. I've not eaten any land animal. Yeah. I'm on fish, but I will do three days with no fish, then I might have something. And mm. I'm slowly but surely going, I do want to go with the full way to, to, to plant-based and I feel a lot better because of it. Yeah. So um, when did you make the transition yourself to, could, uh, can I say that was you like typical Western diet? Completely Western diet. So what I was your say, typical diet? You know, it was probably worse than a Western diet. I ate everything from a Western diet, but then also I didn't even used to consume fruits or vegetables. You didn't? No, you it wasn't even it. my thing. I mean, I would have broccoli every so often if it was smothered in gravy and I had a lot of oxtail or lamb neck or whatever it was I was eating. Any form of meat that can kind of take away the flavor from the vegetable itself. It's but you'll never see, yeah, you'll never see me eat a salad. You'll never see me eating fruits by itself. It was always fruit juices from Concentrate, like Five Alive, Ribena, that type of stuff. It took knowledge. It took me to want to explore just from coming across different scenarios in my life one of them being a personal trainer advising somebody else to take on a different diet i thought i shouldn't ever do that unless i know the diet myself how can i ever tell someone now you should juice for a week if i've never done a juice for a week you know i can't tell somebody to go plant-based or vegetarian for five days if i've never done it which most trainers do actually do nutritionists do it all the time they don't know it firsthand they don't have first-hand experience or use yourself as a case study before they provide information to somebody else to do something. So when it comes, if somebody's ever has any symptoms, they don't know how to relate to that person. They don't know how to tell that person how to get over it. So that was my first stage in when, in which I started trying different types of foods for a, a substantial amount of time. Then I started looking into the food to find out what the food does to benefit me and how it affects me in a negative way. That aside, sitting at the barber shop where when you're getting a haircut, as you know, everybody's in there chatting away. And the Rastafarian came in, he had a book called African Holistic Health, and he was going through all different types of foods and what's good, what's put into the food and how it affects the body. I asked him, does it have anything to do about milk? Because I used to drink milk by the glass and I used to add milk to everything. Because the, the, the so it's not eject, because, but, but like the misconception is. Not even because of the, the misconception that it's going to give you all the calcium and make your bones strong. It's because I prefer to drink milk over water. Right, because of the taste? Yeah, taste. Okay. And one of my friends used to say, oh, you should stop drinking milk. It's bad for you. But why? And they used to give me an answer, why? I don't carry on doing what I'm doing. Then I asked this, this, this man behind me, does have anything to do with milk? He started mentioning the things that's put into milk, how it's pasteurized, what's heated up with, what they add to it, what's naturally allowed in per carton of milk, like the amount of pus cells and blood cells that's allowed within per carton, that's legally allowed within each carton of milk. And that from then put me off. And when I got home that day, I literally threw everything out that had milk in it and anything that I ate with milk, 
So my kitchen cupboards was almost empty. So my hot chocolates, my cereal, my custard, eggs, because I had to scrambled eggs and add milk to it. Just got rid of it. And that was basically the start of my journey. Understanding that I'm separating myself. I'm, I started realizing from that one change, mm. I'm basically breaking a chain of mental slavery. Okay. And your, let's talk about your weight. I mean, you're in fantastic shape now. Oh, thank That's you. Obviously, because you train really hard. Yeah. I know that firsthand because you just put me through <laughs> some shit, <laughs> which is great. Um, your nutrition, but what was your weight like when you had the old diet? Probably more plump, much more water retention, I would say. Um, a lot more body fat consumption. Like okay. my yeah, I think I, my body fat was around twenty one, okay. and it fluctuated between nineteen and twenty one. But to me, I was just like, yeah, because yeah. I know you mentioned on the podcast as well with Resi about beast mode and being a beast yeah. and all. And that's typically what most people hear when you go down the gym. Like, yeah, beast mode. You want to and you want to be this raging animal and yeah. stuff like that. But in actual fact that if you have kind of the more better diet mm. or the more scientifically proven diet to, to give you energy and stuff, yeah. the slender, more slender look is actually going to give you sustainable energy and yeah. it's the more natural look. Longevity. Yeah. You know, um, I was. It's the first time I haven't been fluctuating up and down in weight. Whereas before, I'll buy something, I might drop it down in size, then I might go up in size. Now, I'm just my size and my muscle mass is what increases. And I prefer to be able to put on a suit and not have to worry about getting extra size and extra tailoring done. If I take off my shirt, you'll be like, oh, that guy really trains. Yeah. I don't feel like I need the size to be intimidating. Yeah. And a lot of people, without them realizing, <laughs> that's what they can, that's the look they're going for, yeah. beast mode. They want to have that intimidating look. I would, yeah, at times they want to put on a soft um, persona, but at the end of the day, they still want to be, they want that look to be a part of their protection. I can be aggressive at the same time, you know, so that was something that I just pushed aside. Okay. And what about your, so energy levels, like your old you, the new you, like, and, and like, I know they're going to be miles apart, but what kind of things? Because for me, yeah. since I've made that transition yeah. and I'm still on my journey, yeah. my sleep has been has been much better. Mm -hmm. And there's been other aspects which have been much better. Yeah. How would you say your, your energy levels? Incredible, difference? incredible difference. I mean, just like you said, the sleep, my sleep pattern completely reversed. I was getting much better sleep due to the fact that the, the food that I was consuming in the evening was tripping the, the amino acid called tryptophan, which helps to put you into a deep sleep. And because that was happening, I was never able to really fully get tired and produce the right amount of serotonin to allow me to even feel tired at the right time of day, as well as put me into a nice deep sleep that would carry me out throughout the whole night. So whenever I woke up, I was always restless. But I just worked through it because I should be able to work through it because I'm a trainer, mm -hmm. you know? And when I changed my diet, that completely changed. Did a complete 180 and noticed I was getting a lot more energy because my digestive system was working a lot less harder than it used to be um, besides that my blood vessels were expanding whenever I was ex exercising at an increased rate enough for the blood flow which the blood cells would carry the oxygen uh, my muscle fibers were able to receive it which allows me to receive more oxygen to my muscle groups which I'm exercising. Therefore, my endurance increased. So a lot of these changes I was noticing within the first week. 10 days in, I was like, no, I'm in. I'm fully involved, yeah. like, this is me. I think I'm gonna keep going and I just drove shit through it. The more I transition, the, 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 the better I feel. And did you ever get like uh, any, like, as I mentioned to you earlier, I've mm. had a bit of a battle with coffee recently. Yeah. Because I know I wanna come off of it. Yeah. Um, and I went off of it for a few weeks and then yeah. I kind of relapsed. Yeah. Because it is a drug. Yeah. It is really like a drug, isn't it? And did you ever get that with any kind of food or anything like nah. that? Nothing. Nah. There's, the only type of food that I ever kind of missed was just standard wheat pasta. So there was nothing that tasted anything like it. So. Because I've tried red lentil pasta yeah. and stuff. Red lentil pasta, green lentil pasta, buckwheat, 
sweet potato noodles, try them all, but none of them, or chickpea even, none of them would give you that kick like wheat pasta would do. But for me, why does it give me that kick? Okay, let me look into it and let me dive a little bit more. It's not just the, the, the sugar that, of course, which causes that high fluctuation, but also, well, what it's called is amylopectin. Amylopectin A is the group that's categorized in, which means it has the highest form of effect on your blood sugar levels when you consume it, so it creates a huge spike. This is why people that are diabetic shouldn't be consuming any form of wheat products, especially whole wheat. Whole wheat is even worse and, can, and has a higher rate on the GI um, glycemic index chart because it hasn't gone through a process. So therefore it causes the blood sugar to shoot up even higher. That aside, wheat contains a protein called gluten. And with that um, gluten protein contains a, an, a, a molecule called morphine, which we know is a drug. Yeah. And that is an opiate derivative. So that being an opiate derivative, stimulates you in a particular way which charges you up and makes you feel like i'm buzzing off of it of course something that you take over many years you don't feel that spark up but yeah. it's something that's happening every time you eat it and if you look in most products you'll always find wheat as a derivative that was or a preserve or additive within that product why would it be in there so interesting stuff man if you wanted to when you learn about what it is that you're eating and why you're eating or why you feel like you're addicted to something you have to do the research and once you find that research then you can take a better judgment in what you're going to do the following day am i going to get up and have that coffee knowing that if you've done research on it knowing that it causes adrenal burnout and knowing that it depletes your hormones or depletes your your adrenals from producing those hormones which puts you in fight or flight so that that key moment where you might be in a ring and you're fighting and you need that extra energy, your, your adrenals doesn't have that because it's being depleted, because you're always consuming caffeine. What it's waiting for is a stimulant to charge it up. And when you start doing more research on what it does to your hormones, how it affects your testosterone, how it affects your estrogen levels. So what would you typically replace? Uh, you're probably gonna say something like this, still water or what would you replace like a coffee like if i was let's just say you didn't know me i was just drinking two cups of coffee a day yeah double espresso is normally have, yeah and i was coming off of it how would you advise me to get off of it i would just tell you to read up on it find out the the, the side effects of what it causes the harmful side effects it has in your organs and then i would say how, if you're going to replace it use corella or spirulina all you need is a tablespoon stir it sun corella yeah yeah one shot done and your energy not only does it it coasts gives you a nice rise and it coasts all the way along funny enough i done a, 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 a talk class now public speaking yeah. for a company called world, world infinity and yeah. they were um sponsored or affiliated there was a lady there from sun corella yeah talking so yeah, she, I've, I've taken the product a couple of times. Yeah. It's like green, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. But definitely get the one that's not in capsules. Okay. Yeah, powder. Powder form. Yeah. Or even spirulina, same thing. Yeah. And you don't crash. Your attention's sharper, it lasts longer, and it's actually nutritious. So, uh, like, when you, because like, there's certain people that know their, their stuff, but yeah. the way you articulate it is so easy to understand. And that's mm. why I think that's what resonated with me to begin mm. with. But how did you learn all this stuff? I mean, have you got a mentor? You just read? Is it just something you're passionate about? I, I think the more I started reading, do you know that saying, majority of people when they read books, they get tired. When I'm reading books that are teaching me these things, it wakes me up even more. It's like, I want to finish the page, okay? Let me just finish the get chapter. Excited. Yeah. Um, I like taking on new, new knowledge, new yeah. found information. Majority of the information that I'm speaking about has been told in the early late 1800s early 1900s they have the best information but now it's just been smothered with a load of bull crap it's because marketing there's certain companies that want to make the most amount of money from people because their 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 target is to their mission is to target those people who lack self-esteem you know so making you feel more manly is to say well you need to eat more meat that makes a man manly you know eat like a man these are the type of things that people always 
these are the type of marketing strategies that they, they, they target towards you. Anything, even smoking in the 70s, they were saying if you smoke, that would cure your cough. 20 cigarettes a day, imagine that. Crazy. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. But yeah, so the more I started learning, the more it was charging me. Yeah. I was feeling charged from information. Yeah. And the more I started using it against my, I was using myself as a case study. And I can, why are you going to do something that makes you feel bad? If you feel good doing something, continue doing it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But then there's a difference from feeling, from pleasure and happiness. And pleasure is another thing that's a marketing strategy or a marketing tool to get people addicted to things. And they, they can confuse and conflate the two together, pleasure and happiness together. They're not, they're two separate things. Majority of the time, pleasure is something that can happen alone, where happiness is something that is done amongst a crowd, you know? Um, there's so many different variants in where people are striving for pleasure over happiness because there's no contentment with pleasure. It's always, you've got it for a second and now you're bored of it, I need it, something else. Or I need that again, but I need more of it. And the way that stimulates your neurons, it causes your neurons to save itself, which is called down regulation, that it actually you need more of it to be able to get the same stimulant that you was looking for the first time. Yeah. This is the reason why someone can get 10 likes one day and be like, yeah, gassed. But now, they're looking, they, one day they'll get 15, but oh, no, that's the new target, I can't be on 10. Now I need 100 likes, now I need 1,000 likes, and you'll do whatever it takes to, to get that stimulant. Get yeah. Um, what you said about marketing, so I haven't watched it yet, but Game Changer? Yeah. It's on Netflix. Do you know what, someone messaged me about that like two days ago saying I should watch it. Yeah, it's got Arnold Schwarzenegger <coughs> on there, yeah. who was uh, notorious for obviously being a massive bodybuilder, Mr. Olympia Universe, um, eating meat, Lewis Ham Hamilton. Yeah. Um, you also got a guy called, uh, what's his name? Is it Brian Jennings, a boxer who's uh, vegan? He's actually down to David, ha uh, David Hazen quite a lot. And they're all on there and they're saying like back in the day, they believed eating meat was gonna give you that protein, manly lump strength yeah. and everything else, but they've all realized it's marketing. Yeah. So um, what, just in, in layman terms, why would you say that protein actually isn't the best thing to get, get your body to produce protein? Um, the funny enough, the main reason, a lot of the time we're talking about eating food to feed ourselves, right? Your muscle, it starts off with your cells, the cells make tissue, tissue makes organs, muscle fibers, etc. The number one food source for your cells is oxygen, sugar. Sugar in its cleanest form would come from carbohydrates, but natural carbohydrates, which is our fruits. <laughs> The new form of carbohydrates, because they're pushing fruits out of it, because fruits are not only cleansers, they're hydrators, and they're also beneficial with the amount of vitamins and minerals that they have. They don't want you to consume too much fruits because then it's, it stops people. It allows, the more fruit you consume, the less likely you're gonna become ill. We need people to be sick. This is all about sick care, is how much money we can make of each person. Yeah, medication and now, stuff. You stay away from fruits and you start consuming starches. Starches have a different role in the body. Starches Rice, are like potatoes. Exactly. Um, refined carbohydrates, which would be like what you get from your wheats, your grains, etc. They know that these causes a rise in your blood sugar, blood pressure, um, organ failure, a lack of nutrients and minerals. Hence the reason why the pharmaceutical industry or the meat industry all support each other. And then you end up being sick and de being dependent on our multivitamins tablets. Why? Which, which, <laughs> are, which, which are uh, not even compatible with the body. They're not so, compatible. So you normally piss them out basically. Yeah. Also, what it is is that they don't contain this natural compound. They don't come in this natural chain. All minerals need each other to be synthesized by the body to be absorbed or, or to be stored or metabolized. Yeah. You taking iron supplements is not the best thing. It's yeah. because you need copper. Copper helps your body to absorb it, metabolize it and store it. Same with magnesium. Magnesium also helps with those two things as, as well. Magnesium is a big, um, plays a big, huge role in insulin secretion so that you're able to draw the, the sugar or the glucose into your cells for energy. Yeah. 
if I need energy, then let me eat more fruits. If I want to train hard and I need, I need hydration, let me eat more fruits. You know, if I want muscle mass, let me train harder. It's because if I'm consuming protein and I'm holding back all this water weight, and if I'm concerned about how much I can work out in a session, I would want to be feel lighter so I can do more. Yeah. Rather than storing a lot more saturated fats that make me look more plump. Do I want to look strong or be strong? Yeah. That was my that's my motto. Um, there's a couple of things you were talking about and wanted to speak. So like, let me see if I got this right because this is what I've been reading as well. Um, so a cow, for example, mm -hmm. doesn't eat other cows in order to get protein and mm -hmm. build a muscle. It eats grass. Yeah. And there's many other animals exactly the same, but they're massive, they're strong, mm. they're powerful. And with us, when we eat plants mm. in a raw, in its raw state, there's seven or nine amino acids that will take it, convert it into protein. We develop our own protein. Is that yeah. right? Those are the those are the nine essential amino acids that are told that our bodies cannot make itself so therefore we need to outsource it from it's somewhere external whether it's going to come from a meat source or from a plant source what the what the, the theory is basically is that you can only get substantial amount of protein from meat but the animals that we consume eat plants therefore cut the middleman out eat the plants yeah it's almost like secondary protein isn't yeah. it yeah the only difference is you're getting all the bad shit that comes with it yeah when you consume that animal protein because hormones. you're in your, yeah. not only just the hormones but is the bacteria build up that grows within your gut and that overgrowth is what causes the majority of problems even the smell okay for instance when the bacteria in your gut meets with the animal animal flesh basically it starts to consume the, the choline and the carnitine that production produces TMAO yeah trimethylamine oxide or trimethylamine when it consumes that your liver then converts that to trimethylamine oxide which then causes your cholesterol levels to rise and starts to block your arteries or your 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 capillaries or your blood vessels yeah. which restricts the amount of blood flow to the areas that you need it right Trimethylamine is something that you smell on rotten fish. When you smell rotten fish, like, what's that smell? That's what that is. Mm. That's the same smell that you get in your body when you're consuming animal flesh. Right. So that is the smell that generally comes out of a person's mouth in the mornings when they're farting, where they perspire from their armpits or from wherever else in their body. When you start consuming these foods, all of a sudden you don't have that smell anymore. So now you don't need deodorant. Crazy, man. Yeah, and it's good. It's very <laughs> So uh, now you've got people blocking their sweat pores to stop this horrid smell from leaving their body. Yeah. And then now you have, especially with women, ending up with breast cancer. And uh, I know you, you touched on the milk side of things and, and, and we're talking about meat here, but also if you really think about it, and which I've been starting to think about over the last probably year. Yeah. There's seven odd billion people here on in on the planet, and majority of them are eating meat. Mm. Um, how they get enough milk to people, and how they get enough meat to people, it has to be genetically modified somewhere to get there. And obviously, if you're consuming things which are genetically modified, mm. then there must be some kind of side effects so, which are taking place inside your body, mm. which is forming into the cancers, the, mm. the strokes, the heart disease, or other other forms of problems such as like eczema or mm. I know anything really mm. I mean is that something you would support or something you know a bit, a bit about GMO foods in, in general is something that I avoid it it's funny it's because there's genetically modified foods and there's selective breeding but now where they used to be two separate things they are definitely intertwined now now they're interlinked with each other and you can't distinguish which is which now of course what the original corn looks like to back in those days compared to what it looks like now of course they went through selective breeding mm. but then they started genetically modifying those corn so that for population control whether that's something that you follow or not it's something that they started doing where they started um, manipulating the genes of the corn so that it carried a HIV gene so that they was basically feeding that to a lot of Africans and saying what well, we're trying to prevent them from getting AIDS or HIV and it's like, 
no, it doesn't work like that. What are you talking about? And that was their spin on them getting, being caught out because somebody done a test on the corn, the corn gene. The, then they did something else to the corn, which they started using, and, and they were sending that all over South, uh, South America. And I think it, the, the story came out in Mexico, which was that they found that the corn that they was consuming was preventing, was making women sterile or men sterile so that they couldn't reproduce, of course, was having troubles yeah. having children. This is the problem when it comes to genetically modifying food, it's because it's not natural to the body and the body doesn't recognise it. What it's supposed to recognise is something that comes in, in its natural form, the natural compounds of it, the, 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 the natural electrical charge which works synergistically with our body. And now it doesn't have that electrical charge, it's because it's not natural. Right, right. Um, bit of, so I'm obviously a, a father, I yeah. know you are as well, and the lady who introduced me to you, the podcast episode is a lady called Katrina with her boyfriend um, Chris, and they're about to have a baby in the next few months. Yeah. So I did promise, I would say, I would ask some questions about my son, he's yeah. got breast milk at the moment, but within a, a month's time he's going to be one, yeah. which I can't believe it's already one. Um, He's not having any meat. Uh, mm-hmm. I've been feeding him um, fruits, veg. Um, there has been a bit of fish. Yeah. But I don't. I don't. I still kind of don't like it. Yeah. But any reasons why? Why I, ha- I have? Do you know why? Because it's it's kind of like because I'm eating it. Yeah. It's just kind of maybe out of ease where we've got the food. Yeah. We've fed him a, a little bit, but I'm I. I say even to my missus, like even when he has a bit, I said that's enough, like yeah, no, yeah. no more. But anyway, so I wanted to know kind of when could be the right time or when would you recommend where he comes off breast milk completely? Mm. And then for someone who is pregnant, mm. what kind of things can they be doing to support themselves, give themselves enough energy, but then also for the baby which is going to be coming? All right, so first question is when should they come off the breast? I think. The transition from strictly being breastfed, like with my daughter, we were strictly breastfed up until she was one. And then we started introducing food to her. She played around with it. She was never really eating it. It took many months before she actually started eating it. Um, Generally, I would say two years is a good amount of time because what happens is that your child would be eating food and breastfeeding. Yeah, that's what mine's doing at the moment. And then I think A lot of people, what they do, they generally allow their child either to wean themselves or they wean them if they feel like enough's enough. But two years is a really good time. And why is that? What's the science behind that? The science behind it is, is one is the connection with your, with mother and child. Yeah. The connection, not only with mother and child, but microbiome to microbiome. Yeah. Whatever the child needs or is lacking in, the child gets it from the milk. So for instance, where there might be, if a child is about to pick up something like a cold or flu, there will be something that a child may need more of that the mother's going to have. And that connection with mouth to nipple, is, it makes that um, communication straight down to your, the mother's microbiome or gut flora to produce the type of vitamins that needs to be trans <coughs> transported to through the nipple to the baby to that gut so that that child is more immune to any illness or sickness that may derive at a later date and that's one of the reasons why you would find that your child is least likely to become ill over most other children of the of his his age yeah just like my daughter is he, he's, he's like apart from when he was teething and he had the, the regular like little bit of redness here yeah. and occasional tiny little bit of like mucus around like the nose or stuff. yeah by that he has been completely healthy yeah and I, I do put it a lot a lot of it down to breast milk yeah it's what the body needs exactly what everybody needs um your second question but like so Cat uh, Katrina, she's she's pregnant at the, at the moment. And, yeah, um, I'm always interested to know about um, how the body works. What should it be having, mm. uh, regardless whether it's a female or male? I just I'm interested in it. Yeah. So what could she have to have be energetic, but making sure that you know the new ones getting everything it needs. Again, like you said, the word energetic. Where do we get our energy from? Our sugars, right? Um, fruit is the key, is the, the most prominent food 
for for us to consume although we talk about consuming vegetables or leafy greens we don't we don't have the same amount of stomachs as a cow does we don't have some seven stomachs to break down that food and to metabolize it the way that we need to we do have a very long gi tract which allows time for us to break down this food but at the same time the most simplest and easiest form of food to consume would be fruit of course you go tropical stick to the seasons which is here in the uk whichever one you decide to go for but at the end of the day what is making up your baby's health is what your body or what katrina's body is already made up of so when we start talking about having children and making them the most healthiest it starts with how healthy is the, the mother in the very beginning how healthy was the man in the very beginnings because it's about alkalizing and alkalizing your your seed and her alkalizing her soil it's because you want the most nutritious seed and the most nutritious soil together to work yeah. together that comes down to cleansing before pregnancy then of course when you conceive you start you be more strategic in the type of foods that you're eating how hydrated you're staying and the food that you're consuming which is causing the least amount of obstruction to the body which is mucus okay. for instance what well, foods that's going to cause you to have high blood pressure foods that's going to interfere with your microbiome because your microbiome is what is emulated in the bacteria if in the, the vagina so when a child comes through the vaginal canal it picks up that bacteria which also starts to form the child's microbiome right. and of course the the vernix which is showered over the baby the bacteria the microorganisms which is showered from the, the rectum of the mother when the, the woman gives birth is what also adds to the microbiome of that child Amazing a lot of people that have c-sections they miss that part they don't get showered by the microorganisms from the, from the anus they don't get showered by the micro the, the bacteria within the vaginal canals because they bypass it which is unfortunate but it happens to a lot of people yeah and i know we probably haven't got time right now but i was always fascinated when you told told the audience about the lotus birth i mean yeah i kind of now wish i knew about it before because mm. i would have or i would have liked to have, have gone through it it's easy for me to say because i'm not the one giving birth <laughs> but um, i saw the, all yeah. the logic behind that so much yeah. so um just before we wrap up just want to ask you about the, the training session we put me, put me through yeah because most people believe the only way you're going to get big strong mm. fitter stronger wh whatever is going into a gym and lifting all these heavy weights i've just done a session which was tough and yeah. i lifted no weight apart from my own yeah. my own body yeah why do you think that's so important it's because you're lifting your weight and of course when you're lifting external weight you're putting a lot of a load on one specific area because most of it is is isometric hence the reason why a lot of people a lot of bodybuilders end up with joint pains but also lifting lifting weights shortens your muscles when when you do bodyweight training it elongates your muscles and it keeps the, your range of motion that's what we're, we want to keep hold of um your body weight can't be any lighter it's your weight so you have to work with it. So eventually the strength that you gain from lifting your own weight would increase the amount of strength that you can put in when you go into a gym environment and lift normal weights mm. that you would typically just lift without, if you wasn't in a, in a gym. So when you go from body weight training to weight training, you can straight away notice how much more you can lift. When you go from weight training to body weight training, you realize how much weaker you are. And that's something that I've always come across whenever I started training people from a gym environment to an outdoor gym environment. Nice. Um, okay, so where can everyone find you, Coop? Um, you can find me on Instagram at, at Coop underscore DC. That's C-O-U-P-E underscore DC. And, and on YouTube, um, Break Fresh. That's, that's something that we need to... Um, we haven't... We stopped for a while. We're coming back with some I, more I, episodes. I, I follow, follow that yeah. page and also your Mrs. Pink, Pink. The Pink Coconut. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. Um, the <clears throat> last thing I say to all my, I've got my own quote, which is be happy, never content. Mm. I try and live by that mindset mm. wherever I go, whether it's my good days or the days where I'm feeling challenged. Yeah. Be happy, never content. Mm. If I were to ask you your interpretation of that saying, what does that mean to you? Mm. Happiness is a state of consciousness powerful <laughs> thank you mate and uh thank you for the training no, thank you for your time and we didn't 
got nowhere near enough time, so we're going to have to do another another. Let's part, do it. Uh, another, uh, another stage. Part two. Thank part you. Part two coming. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Last one.